Hey everybody, welcome to Mr. Raleigh's virtual music classroom. Today's lesson is the first lesson in my series of dealing with composition. Music composition is a passion of mine. In fact, my one dream other than teaching was to be a film score uh, composer. And I still hope someday that maybe I can reach that. Even if it's nothing more than writing music for my own films that I make, because I'm also a filmmaker. That aside, one of the things um, that is important in composition to me is that we can write quality music um, even for the youngest of musicians. So we're going to start these lessons acting like you are a young musician. Because if you've never co composed before, you need to um, approach it like a beginner, even if you're not a beginner on your instrument. Um, and we're going to talk about composition from the aspect of being an instrumentalist. Songwriting is a form of composition. In fact, a songwriter is a composer. But with songwriting, we're dealing with text. We're dealing with the words as well as the music. Um, writing for choir is similar to songwriting. You're taking a song that already exists and arranging it into choir, or you're writing sp specifically a choral composition. Those forms of composition are part of composition. I do have a songwriting series of lessons as well. And later on with the composition series that this video is the first of, we will talk about writing choral works as well. But we're going to start with instrumental. And the reason we're going to start there is in my classes many times, um, every year actually, we do a composition unit. Um, it's usually towards the end of the year when our big meaty concerts are over, but I want the students to create on their own instruments. And I realize throughout music education, um, in modern times especially, we have talked about being creative with our students. And we talk about how jazz, uh, students who are jazz um, artists are learning how to create throughout improvisation. That's great, and there's nothing wrong with that, and that's awesome. I want to have a, an avenue for other instrumentals who aren't necessarily jazz musicians or want to be jazz musicians to be able to create something on their instrument. Some of our greatest composers in history were instrumentalists first, whether it be Bach on the organ, Mozart on the piano and the violin. The idea is that you take your instrument, mess around on it a little bit, and find something that works. I've often thought that composition classes for collegiate students, people who want to become co composers, um, should have a class on uh, how a sixth grader could write a piece of music. Say they know seven or eight notes and say, now, use those seven or eight pitches that you know on your instrument and write a good melody. And that's how we're going to start this lesson and how we're going to approach it to begin with. The first thing we need to understand is that composing is just that. It is creating something that may not have existed before or should not have existed before. It's original, it's your idea, and there's no right or wrong answers. However, we do have tools that will help us. Many of those tools I've also talked about in another series of lessons here in Mr. Raleigh's virtual music classroom. Um, the music theory series will help you if you don't understand some of the concepts that I'll be talking about. Just like in the songwriting series, I'll have you refer back to the music theory lessons once in a while so you have a good understanding of what to do. So, to start this lesson out, we're going to mostly talk about how to take an instrument, write a melody, and then be able to write that melody down with pitches in paper. My primary instrument is percussion. And I don't have my own marimba here. Um, I do have a xylophone, so I could use that. But I actually want to use an instrument that I'm not necessarily as proficient on as my primary instrument. As a music teacher, I know how to play most of the instruments, at least to a certain extent. But I'm going to choose an instrument that is keyed in the key of C. Um, it's easier to deal with that. We're not going to be dealing with the transpositions yet. Um, so the note I perform or play on the instrument is the note that we write down. Um, so I'm going to choose the flute. And so this is my first tool, my instrument that I'm choosing. Anybody can choose any instrument. You know how to write down things um, on your instrument if you know how to play it a little bit. 
even if you're a beginner in your first method book, the notes and pitches that you use and the rhythms that you have learned, those are the ones you're going to use when you first start composing. What I will tell my students who are in sixth, seventh grade, um, they're getting to where they can play a couple scales on their instruments, they have played several exercises and they've been performed and played uh, in an ensemble playing their parts in music written by others. So how do you start? The very first thing I tell them to do is start with the, key, the scale that you know best. And for many band students, that would be the concert B flat scale. So there's seven pitches, eight counting the octave, that we can use. Maybe we'll use a little more because you might know the high C and the high D. Those are, in, those are notes that you may end up using. But at least those are your first pitches you're going to do. And now you just play around with those pitches. Try not to get any other pitches in there. And figure something out that you like, some type of figure or hook that you like when, when messing around. So let's say I'm messing around. So when I come back in a little while, I'm going to sit down and mess around some more and come back up with something. I'll have written out a few ideas that could turn into a piece of music. The first thing we're going to write is just a four to eight bar melody. Probably going to be an eight bar, eight measure melody. That's a, that's a good solid musical phrase to work with. Um, and we're going to go from there. This first lesson is just about getting your first idea down in notation um, so you can then grow it from there through the next few lessons. So as I played around with some ideas, um, I brought up on the computer screen, I use Finale Notation um, software and I'm going to start writing some of my ideas down. Remember, this lesson is an intro and an idea thing. That's what it's about. I introduced you uh, earlier about what this was all about and now it's um, now I'm going to take my ideas I'm going to start writing them down and showing you how to go about that uh, whether it be using computer software or even if you do in pe paper and pencil. Uh, I'm going to take the flute again and I'm going to play a couple things and then I'm going to write them down but before I even write them down I'm going to show you how to figure out uh, at least how maybe the rhythm will go and then you'll kind of figure out what your pitches are. So one of my ideas that came up with this So bum 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 Alright So there's my rhythm and so if I'm gonna give myself a tempo Bum, 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 bum. I slowed it down a little bit so I could figure it out. One and three, four. One and two and three. Rest. Or two, ta, two, two, ta, 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 two. Rest. And I started on B flat. B flat, C, D, E flat. So let's write that first part down. Okay, so the next part. And then F. F, 
F, E, E flat, E, F. things about writing music is that there's repetition in music. A good melody has a couple of things in it. It has shape, it's gonna go somewhere, and there's usually some type of repetition. That repetition could be just an exact replica, or it could be a repetition starting on a different pitch with the same rhythms, or it could be the same thing but turned upside down. Um, there's lots of different what we call compositional tools or techniques we can use to make our melody a little bit more uh, interesting um, and give it the shape and the sounds that we want. So now that we have a starting point, we have a starting idea, I'm going to play around a little bit more and come up with the rest of it and we'll come back to you on the camera in a little bit. So I've come up with some more ideas and I put them down um, and we're going to listen to them. Um, I'm going to play them and there's a couple of things. Just because it sounds really good to the ear doesn't mean it's really playable. I ask my students when they're writing something, especially when they're writing for the inst their instrument, to write something that they can play. Now, not all composers do that. I write a lot of music that I can't play some of the parts on because that's not my primary instrument. But I do know and understand and have learned what the instruments can and can't do. Um, but there also be a, has to be a playability to it, especially for the level that you're writing for. This is for a middle level type student. So let's, let's take a look at it. It does have some chromaticism at the beginning that I'm a little concerned about. I'll be honest with you. And chromaticism is when we add accidentals into the um, key that we're playing in or into the notes from the scale that we're playing in that aren't in the scale. So I have an E natural here a couple of times, which it works, but maybe I want to make it a little bit easier for the person who may be playing this. take those E naturals out and do something a little less, but different with it. But let's take a listen just to make sure. Now, as a melody, I think it works. I think it works just fine, and we could do a whole lot more with developing it and uh, changing things up a little bit or adding a, another melody to it to create a different form. Uh, right now, this is just one simple music phrase. I'm a, I am still concerned about those E naturals, so I'm gonna go in and try something different and change it up a little bit, and that's what composition is all about. Trying different things at different times, making sure that they work. Sometimes they will, sometimes they won't. Sometimes we'll explore and we'll find something that works really, really well. So I actually like that a little bit better. It's a little more diatonic. That's a word you may not have heard before. Diatonic means that we're staying in the key. We're not moving outside the key. Well, if we move outside the key, when we add accidentals like I did with the E natural, then it's more chromatic. Um, there are certain pieces of music that have a lot of chromatics in them or chromaticism. Nothing wrong with that. There's, it just makes it a little bit more difficult. When you're more diatonic, then it also makes it a little easier for a younger player to play. It's a little easier to sing. It's a little easier to understand. 
So I wanted to keep this fairly diatonic because of the level that I'm thinking about for the composition itself, the level of performer who's going to perform it. And I still don't exactly know where this melody is going to grow. That's really important to understand. Sometimes you just start messing around and you come up with ideas that um, for the moment are only a melody inside your head or an idea inside your head. And then you put it down on paper, you play it on an instrument, and then new ideas come to you because of that. That's the whole glory of, of composition. I will tell people it's kind of like painting. In fact, it is painting. We're just not painting with, with paint and colors. We're painting with sounds. So when a painter sits down or stands up at their easel and they have their palette and they have all their colors on there and they take their brush and they dip it, they just make a decision, I want blue. And so they put blue and they start putting blue up there and they look at it and then they, mm, okay, let's see, what can go with that? And they put another one and maybe they mix some colors together. That's what you're doing. You're just doing it with sounds and timbres of instruments. As we do this, again, if you liked those E-naturals, like I Forever originally had, then stick with them. That's okay. You might make changes later on when you start harmonizing it, which will be what we do in the next lesson. But right now, I think we've solidified on a um, melody, and I want to talk a little bit about this melody and why it works. So, it goes somewhere. It has good shape. It undulates up and down. It's kind of what I was thinking about. It also fits the instrument of the flute for a younger player. Um, so, it doesn't go too high. In fact, the high goes to is an A above the staff, and it starts on a B flat and ends on a B flat, and it's in the key of B flat. So this is a, it's a fairly simple idea within the um, scale. Let's take a listen to it one more time. So one of the things that we notice right, off, right away is that almost every measure, almost, not quite, almost every measure has a dotted quarter note followed by an eighth note followed by another quarter note. Almost, what, six times, I think, something like that, five times? That is a very common repeated rhythm in here. But it's not repeated on the same pitches. That's something to understand. That's a good repetition. It gives it some cohesiveness. Um, the sets of four eighth notes followed by a half note, that ry rhythmic figure happens three times. So within the rhythmic part of it, it has uh, got a lot of cohesiveness and understanding to it. It has another thing that happens, another compositional tool, and that's starting in measure five, you have what we call a sequence. We have the exact same pattern not only rhythmic pattern, but also pattern of interval and um, pitch happening for three measures. D, E flat, F, C, E flat, F, G, F, G, D, F, G, A, E flat. They're not always exactly the same interval, but they are in the scale. And they go, the, each measure starts on D, then E flat, then F. Goes up a step each time and it keeps the same distance within the key between the pitches and the rhythms are the same. And it works really well because it kind of sets up this nice shape to the, to the melody at the end of the melody that then comes back down to the tonic at the very end. I like that. It just gives it something. It feels like it's going somewhere, but it doesn't quite... It kind of fakes you out a little bit. It feels like you're going to continue to go up, but then you end down. So it's a little surprising. It has a little spontaneity to it. I like that. In the first four measures, we have two, measure, two measures each of the same rhythm. And again, kind of a sequence. It's only done twice, so it's not really a sequence, but B flat, C, D, E flat, F, G, F, G, F. Then C, D, E flat, F, G, A, G, F, E flat. So it's a little bit different, but it's enough that it sets up some interest. And I also am thinking about what the harmony might be in the future. Now, you don't have to do that, but I've been writing melodies for so long, it's something I do automatically. Um, so I've come up with an idea here. That's all it is, is an idea. 
I've clapped out some rhythms. I've uh, played around on my instrument. I've uh, written things down. I did some changes where my first idea was. And again, that's all part of composing. We've been given an opportunity here to take something that we thought of in our head and put it on paper, and now we can develop it further. All right, let's recap a little bit. First, you're composing for one instrument right now. That's it, an instrument that you can play. You're going to mess around with your instrument and come up with ideas. Those ideas can be based on a scale or rhythmic ideas that you may have. Uh, we learned a little bit about diatonic and chromatic and what those things mean. Uh, my advice is to stay within diatonics right now. Uh, kind of understand who you're writing it for. More than likely, you're writing it for yourself. But if you're writing for others, understand what their abilities are. There's so much more that we're going to come into discovering with composition. But we're going to keep it simple right now. The next lesson, we're going to take this melody that we've already written. We may add more parts to it um, to turn it into a full piece of music. So then we might be creating form and new melodies. We're also going to harmonize. So uh, I hope you've learned a little bit. I hope that you can mess around on your instrument and figure some things out. Uh, and I hope to see you in the next lesson. Thank you. Thanks again for visiting Mr. Raleigh's virtual music classroom. I hope you enjoyed the lesson. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. Thanks.